All right, so we're back here with this, still in the seventh lesson of the 30-hour post-licensing course. And we've been talking about financing, and one of the issues that very seldom gets spoke about, especially to us, is credit score. So I want to take a minute to touch on the credit score so that you can kind of understand when your client comes to you, you can now get an idea and ask them, do they know their credit score? Because there is a lot of information that is given in that credit score. So the first one is, what are the three companies? So let's go over here. The three companies that deal with credit score are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, all right? So these are the three that they, they will use. Now, typically you get those free credit places like Credit Karma and anything of that nature and they are going to report a credit score. Typically, I believe the one they love is the Experian, so they will give them a credit score. The reality is there are three credit reporting bureaus, and if they pull all three of them, your lender will call that a tri-merge. Obviously, tri meaning three, and merge meaning merge. So they will pull all three of them and they will get three credit scores. All right. Now, in a situation like this where they pull the three credit scores, your lender is always going to use the mid score. All right. It's not the average. It's not the median. It's, you know, any other mathematical term you want to come with. He always just uses the middle one. And they are all going to be roughly close to the same number, all right? Now, if there's two people, say a husband and wife, here's the problem that you get. Let's say you've got one party whose credit scores are a 609, a 611, and a 615. And then the other party is really good. They've got a 705, a 710, and a 712. Here's the situation. You would think that they would say, oh, you got a really good client. It's do that. No, what ends up happening is when there's two parties or more, they always choose the worst of the two because that is the default and they would base their protection on this guy's interest rate because this interest rate may be a little higher than that interest rate. So there's a little more risk. So basically what they're saying is the bad guy is going to influence the good guy more than the good guy would influence the bad guy, which I don't know if I necessarily believe, but that's how they look at it. So this is a situation that occasionally when you see, oh, well, you know, hey, your spouse's credit score is not good enough. We can only put the loan in one name. Now you get a better credit score. Of course, you also do not get the income generated by this person either since you're not using them, you would only have to use their income. So therein lies some of the tricky parts about the credit score and the companies that are being used in that, okay? Now, so how is the credit score determined? Well, glad you asked that. Here is the credit score. The credit score is actually grouped into five categories. There are five things they look at when determining a credit score. Your payment history, is 35% of your score. So virtually how well you make your payments is over one third of the score in and of itself. Then obviously you can see here, how much do you owe? What is your debt to ratio, debt to income? Or how much credit have you actually using versus how much you've been issued? How long? There are people that say, oh, well, I've had a credit card for four or five years, eight years, nine years. I think I'll just cancel it. No, you really should keep that because length of credit score does play into your credit score. Is there anybody giving you new credit? That accounts for some points. And then credit mix. What I mean by that is do you have um, revolving credit and do you have term credit? Term credit would be like something that you buy and you pay it off, it goes away. Like a credit, uh, car, car loan would be that. As opposed to a Visa card, which is revolving. You pay, you use it, you pay it down, you get it back, okay? They like to see both of that. So your credit score is based upon 
these five elements, and as you can see, the payment history is probably the best uh, one that they can work on. Now, that credit score is composed of those five uh, components that give you a score. And one of the scores they give you is this thing called a FICO score. Now, FICO stands for Fair Isaac Corporation, and it has been around since 1989. So it's a 30-year-old company, and basically it's a three-digit number based on the information of your credit. They take those five components and they configure it to give you a score. And basically, here's how the scores work out. You know, as you can see, most lenders want to be here to do better credit scoring. Those 669 and below are really problematic in getting loans and things of that nature. Now, each one of those companies that I just mentioned take this FICO score and they kind of tweak it a little bit, which is why you end up seeing things like different credit scores. You would think, hey, if they're all using the same thing, but they have their own little variation. FICO is but one scoring method. There are actually multiple different scoring methods that they use. FICO just happens to be the gold standard that is used in that, and these are how they rate them. So your client should have a 670 and better. If they've got a 670 and better credit score, basically it should be fairly simple to get them a loan, okay? Now, there's some other things about the credit score or rebuilding your credit score. Actually, the credit score actually has versions too. Let's go back, maybe we should talk about that. They are currently on version nine. So you will see this thing called FICO nine. And each FICO score actually is tweaked differently based upon the credit they're actually looking for. So for example, car loans still use, I think FICO two version. Mortgage people use FICO 8. Uh, I think they're moving to 9. 9 has some uh, different abilities, things like um, medical history doesn't count as bad for you. If you had collections that were paid off, they are not as detrimental as they used to be in the 9 version. So you might want to talk to your mortgage broker and see uh, or the lender, either one, to find out are they using FICO 8, FICO 9. My guess is most mortgage uh, loan originators don't even know, okay? So then the question becomes is can I change my credit score or can I fix my credit score? And the answer is you most certainly can do that. The problem is you've got to watch out for is are those people, those fake people that try and do and help people out, are they really helping you out? Rebuilding your credit is possible. It is not easy. And the biggest problem is it requires a bunch of time. I mean, you're probably looking at anywhere from one to as much as 10 years if it's a bankruptcy they're trying to get rid of. All right, here's some hints. You might want to have your client open a bank account. Believe it or not, opening a bank account might be problematic for some people because if their credit score is really low and they've got issues of uh, bounce checks at other places, those banks all talk. So there are times when some banks will not allow a person to open a credit or even a bank account. So watch that. Get a secured credit card. A secured credit card is one that is, uh, uses collateral. Now that's different than prepaid cards, all right? So make sure you understand. A secured credit card is one in which you actually pony up collateral, like money, okay? You can do that. A prepaid card, which you want to avoid, is are those that are offered by large companies like Green Dot or Walmart, uh, NetSpend, and they have the MasterCard and the Visa logo, 
but unfortunately, a lot of those companies don't even report to the credit bureaus. So therefore, it's really of no help. So make sure that you want to get a credit card that is secured, not prepaid, all right? One of the other things that you could potentially do is there is a bank called BMO Harris. They have a credit builder CD. <clears throat> the credit builder CD allows them to put, it's like $1,100 into a checking account. And then BMO Harris sells them a certificate of deposit for $1,000. And what happens is they pay every month on that CD. Well, the payment comes directly out of the savings that was put in when they opened it. So it gets paid automatically on the first of the month without uh, late fees. They pay on time. They establish 12 months of history. And at the end, that bank account is empty, but you have a $1,000 CD. So virtually you do pay a little bit, a hundred bucks or something, over the course, but you start with cash and you end up with a CD and you get good credit. So I would recommend, uh, you know, the BMO Harris Credit Builder CD, and that's literally what it's called. It's designed for that. So you could look at uh, any bank may have that same scenario. Uh, you can become an authorized user on someone else's credit card because that will report to their credit bureau as well a parent, a friend, any other relative, anybody that can authorize you to be on their credit card. Now, you need to authorize them to be on that account, not just get them a card in their name. That's a whole different scenario. As a parent, I can get a card on my account in my son's name so he can use it. I really need to make him an authorized user on that account. That's when they will start re uh, reporting on his. And lastly, the most important one, obviously, is just improve their habits. You know, make sure you understand what money is. Make sure you learn how to work it. All of that same thing. You've got to change their outlook or they have to change their outlook on how they look at money and what's going on and things of that nature. All right. So that's a little bit about the credit building process. If you have questions, uh, we're going to keep going. We got a couple more stuff to talk about, so we'll be right back.